Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense, and today I'm coming at you guys with my top 10 niche fragrances for spring 2020. I did the designer edition about a week ago, and now it's time to go over the niche and indie fragrances. Obviously, it's a little bit different this year than all the years that I've done this in the past, because this year looks like I'm gonna be spending spring indoors for the most part, not really around friends or other people. So a lot of these fragrances are just ones that I wanna wear for myself. I don't really care as much about, you know, being out and around people with this list. That said, there are gonna be a lot of familiar faces or familiar fragrances in this list if you've seen my niche spring fragrance lists in the past because some of these that are my favorites, I just kind of have to wear every single year. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's jump into this. All right, guys, starting off number 10, a diptyque fragrance, and it's this one, Philosikos. And if I mispronounced that, my bad. Philosikos. Yeah. This one is a fig-based fragrance. Very popular, one of the most well-known fragrances from this house, if not the most well-known. You have fig fruit, fig leaf, and fig tree, all as notes in this scent. You've also got a coconut note in here as well that's probably the most well-known note other than the fig or the most well-recognized note when you talk about this fragrance. All about fig, all about coconut. This one is very green, very fresh. The coconut is creamy and it's uh, very figgy. So both the fruit and the tree. So if you've ever been around a fig tree and smelled it, you know, the, the branches of the tree, the leaves, the fruit, all of that is captured right in here. It's a unisex fragrance, but easily pulled off by men. Fantastic scent and really diptyque, I feel like is a house that does get overlooked a little bit. When you start digging into their catalog, they have lots of fragrances that smell amazing in terms of just the scent itself, the quality, and especially the price that you would pay if you pick them up from a discounter. Because Diptyque is a house that does seem to get discounted fairly heavily at times. So if you ever see a Diptyque fragrance that you've been looking for at a discounter for a great price, I suggest scooping it up. It's what I've always done. Next up, a fragrance from Amouage. This one has gotten a good amount of love, but also a good amount of hate. And it is this one right here, Bracken man. It has clove, cypress, patchouli, and lavender as some of the notes in the fragrance. And one of the main reasons that this has gotten a little bit of hate is going to be the clove. Clove is a note that's very divisive for some people out there, and I've talked about this in the past. If they smell clove at all in a fragrance, they're just like, hate it. <laughs> just immediately. I actually like clove, so when I smell it, I dig it, uh, assuming that it's used well. But for a lot of people out there, clove is a deal breaker. So if you hate clove, if you're one of those people, then Bracken Man, probably not gonna be for you. It is a powerful aromatic fougere. It's one of those scents that reminds me a little bit of being outdoors, being you know, on a mountain, in a forest, something like that, hiking around. This one gives me that sort of idea. It has fresh spicy pops throughout the fragrance. It's got a little bit of a citrus bite in the opening. This is actually one of my favorite Amouage fragrances. I know, like I said, it's divisive and a lot of people hate this fragrance, but I like it. It's gonna take me to number eight. It is the newest Imaginary Authors fragrance and it is Telegrama. And I did pay for this one full retail in case anybody's wondering. And the cap on mine is just really difficult to get off. It is super tight on there, just, ugh. Like all Imaginary Authors fragrances, the notes for the fragrance are on the back, and I'll just read off a couple. It's got talk, lavender absolute, vanilla powder, and then fresh linens, which is going to be the imaginary note in this fragrance. All Imaginary Authors fragrances have at least one imaginary note, this one, fresh linens. This fragrance is actually a bit sweet, actually a good amount sweet. It's got a really powdery lavender. When you first spray this one on, as it dries down, you're gonna get more vanilla that comes out along with some wood. Extremely easy fragrance to wear. Some imaginary author's fragrances are a little bit too challenging or out there for everyday wear for a lot of guys. This one though, easy to wear very much. It's also decidedly clean which you would expect with notes like lavender talk and fresh linens. This one is very nice. I'm a huge fan of the Imaginary Authors line. Had to pick this one up, Telegrama. That takes me to number seven. This one is from the House Inica. It's a house I've talked about a few times in the past. I especially love two of the fragrances that Inica has done. Field Notes from Paris and then this one, 
Idlewild. Cypress, rhubarb, grapefruit, fir, and tea are some of the notes in this fragrance. And when I say fir, I mean the tree, not an animal's fur. Just making sure, making sure you understood. Very green, woody, fresh, with a little bit of tart sweetness from the rhubarb. This one really does smell like going through a forest, uh, like a forest on the west coast of the US, on the Pacific coast. I absolutely love fragrances that smell like you're out in the woods. I've covered a bunch of those on this channel in the past. It's one of my favorite things, and this one does it extremely well, top notch in terms of just the scent itself. The big drawback with this fragrance is going to be the performance. Not good. Off of skin, you're looking at three, four hours and then it's gone. So if you're wanting a little extra performance, you could try spraying this on your clothes. Uh, but if you've never smelled this one before, do not be surprised when it just kind of disappears off your skin. Fragrance itself though, smells fantastic. Like I said, Field Notes from Paris is another one I love from this house. Idlewild is one that I love for the spring. Up next at number six is a fragrance from the House of Creed. This one also is a little divisive, like Bracken Man before it. It's this fragrance, Viking. Now, the reason this was divisive is because this got a lot of hype before it was released. Obviously, you can see the similarities in the bottle style between this and Aventus with the way the uh, wrap is done here on the front, the sticker, and just the design. Whereas on Aventus, it's black, here it's red, and you have the little Viking ship here, obviously, instead of Napoleon, but you see the similarities. So obviously with Creed, they were marketing this as like the next big thing, the new king of fragrances, if you want, the one that was going to take the throne from Aventus, whatever. And then it came out and it was kind of a throwback. It was like a very, very, very high end, old school, almost aftershave kind of fragrance made modern. And a lot of people did not like that. That's not what they were looking for with this fragrance. It's beautifully done. It's extremely versatile, very easy to wear, something that you could wear to the office casually, formally, whatever, and it's going to smell amazing in my opinion. I love it. It's one that's grown on me more and more and more over time. The more wearing that I give this, the more I like it. But because of the hype before this came out, a lot of people just wrote it off right away. You know, hit like one spray on their skin, smelled it, or one spray on a tester strip, whatever, and went, nope, that's not the new Aventus, thumbs down. And then they just, you know, walked away from it, never to smell it again. But I think it's top notch. One of my favorite creeds at this point. It's fresh, it's bracing, it's spicy. Uh, like I said before, sophisticated, gentlemanly, very versatile, and has some woods in the dry down. Very, very well done. Creed Viking. After that, one of the new Raja Parfums, Parfum Cologne fragrances, Vetiver. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know I like Vetiver, and this is a good one. It's got galbanum, cedar, lemon, and bergamot, and of course, Vetiver, as some of the notes. This one, like many of the fragrances before it, very fresh and green. It's clean, woody, gentlemanly. It's bracing, it's got a little bit of a bite in the opening to the fragrance, as well as some bitterness in there as well. Like Viking, it's got a little bit of that old world, old school sophistication in it, but modernized, made fresher, more accessible, easier to wear, more appealing. The Parfum Cologne collection is essentially Raja Parfums taking some of their more well-known men's fragrances and then modernizing them and re-releasing them in this style of bottle and making them more affordable, lowering that price a little bit, trying to make them more accessible to more people. Uh, to an extent, it's like Raja Parfums trying to make entry-level fragrances for their niche brand. And I don't mean that as in these are low quality or anything like that. They're just very accessible. Easier to wear, lower price overall, though they're still expensive. It's gonna take us to number four. This fragrance is from the House of Idio Parfumers, and the fragrance is Tarbouche Afondi. This obviously not a house that gets talked about much at all, and a fragrance also does not really get talked about, but this is one that I like a lot. And I'm gonna be wearing this a bunch over the next month or two. It has violet, benzoin, tobacco, and animalic notes as some of the notes in the fragrance. But I've gotta be honest with you guys, it's not really an animalic fragrance. It doesn't have a lot of that funk to it, that abrasiveness that you might associate with animalic notes. There's resinous sweetness in here, a little bit of citrus, the tobacco leaf, 
kind of weaves in and out throughout the fragrance from the opening into the dry down. And then there are also woods in this fragrance as well into the dry down. It smells very nice, very approachable. As far as tobacco fragrances go that I own, that one's one of the more wearable, more approachable ones in springtime. And I haven't been able to give that enough wear in the past. So I figure right now is as good a time as any. That's gonna take me to the top three and number three is another vetiver fragrance. It's Mask Milano Hemingway, or an ode to Hemingway. And this one actually uses three different types of vetiver. So you're gonna get a little bit of smokiness from the vetiver, some grassiness, a little bit of earthiness. Basically, any way that vetiver can come across, you're gonna get that in this fragrance at one point or another. And I absolutely love fragrances that do that with vetiver, where you get to see all the depth that vetiver has, all the different ways that it can come across, all the different facets. That's why I like this fragrance so much, and it's why I like Sultan Vetiver, which is back here by Nishane just as much. There's also ginger, rhubarb, and leather in here. The opening is gonna be brisk and bracing, and that's gonna be because of the ginger and rhubarb mixing together. It smells great to me. I know some people don't like the opening quite as much, but I really do adore it in this fragrance. Then as it dries down, of course, you're gonna get all those different types of vetiver swirling around and some leather as well. There's also cedar, giving a little bit of extra woodiness, and patchouli, giving a little bit of extra earthiness in the base of the fragrance. Great release, one of my favorites from Mask Milano. Number three, Hemingway. And the top two, really not a big surprise. If you follow this channel for a while, you may know what they are already, but we're gonna do them anyway. Number two, Bleecker Street by Bond number nine. Violet, blueberry, oak moss, and suede some of the notes in this fragrance. This came out in 2005. Purple Label by Ralph Lauren came out in 2003. The reason I bring that up is this does have a similarity to Purple Label. Pretty, pretty strong similarity. So you could say that Bond number nine took a look at Purple Label and said, hey, what if we do something a little bit like that? And uh, then they did, but I still love it. Bond number nine is one of those houses that does catch a little bit of hate and for good reason. They release a lot of fragrances and a bunch of those fragrances that they release are not so great. They cost a good amount of money retail, a very solid amount of money. And with some of those fragrances, when you smell them, you'll be like, this does not smell like a $300 or $400 fragrance. Some of them do smell cheap or synthetic or screechy or whatever you want to say. Some of them don't smell all that well put together, but Bleecker Street is a personal favorite. It's very grassy and green initially. It's gonna come from the violet leaf mainly. And then you're gonna have some blueberry sweetness and as it dries down, suede leather, along with a little bit of oak moss and woods. When I smell this and just how green it is, especially in the opening, makes me think of spring just right away. Puts me in a good frame of mind. It's a fragrance that I have worn out over the years. I've gone through a couple bottles of that actually, 50 milliliter bottles. Um, and then I upgraded to bigger bottles so they would last longer. It's a fragrance that I just love. And I know a lot of people out there are gonna view that and be like, oh, Bond number nine, uh, gross, whatever, but I love it. And that's gonna take me to number one, not a surprise at all, Green Irish Tweed by Creed. Yeah, I love this fragrance. This is probably my favorite Creed fragrance. Yeah, I would say it is. There are a lot of very solid Creed fragrances. They are just extremely easy to wear for the most part. Each one of the fragrances that Creed has released in their main men's line, just very approachable, good quality, well put together, nice fragrances. Lemon, Verbena, Violet, Iris, Ambergris, Sandalwood. The notes in this fragrance, of course, if you wanted to get a cheap version of Green Iris Tweed, you could get something like Aspen by Cody. It's gonna get you a similar feel for way less money. You could do Davidoff Cool Water, of course. Uh, you could go with one of the countless clones out there, but for me, nothing beats the real deal. It's green, it's classically masculine, something you could wear casually, formally, to the office, whatever. You can do it all with this fragrance. Of course, when they advertise this, they say it's like a walk through the Irish countryside. It's supposed to be what it is, just green, clean, fresh. 
Green Hour Tweed came out in the 80s, but it does not smell dated to me. I still wear this all the time, and I do still pull compliments from this fragrance. It just is timeless, and it would not be a spring for me unless I was wearing Creed Green Irish Tweed. And it comes in at number one for 2020, and now more than ever, I actually really want to wear it because it puts me in a good mood, and with everything that's going on and being kind of isolated, cooped up day after day after day after day, something like this gives me a nice little respite from everything else. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me for my niche top 10 for 2020 spring. Let me know in the comments below some of the fragrances that you guys are wearing this spring. Stay safe out there and thanks for all your support. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.